Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Today we're speaking to Luce Lebar, historian of photography and curator. Her latest show involves a trip across the Atlantic and back in time, a look through the archives at Lady Liberty, the statue which became synonymous with New York. Dreamed up as a symbol of Franco-American friendship, liberty enlightening the world is now an icon, and much of that is thanks to the photographic medium. Hello, Luce. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Now, this show takes in 100 archive photogra photographs um, of the statue during its construction, its conception, and then its use in popular imagery. How did the idea for Lady Liberty come about? Um, it all started when Sam Sturzday, who is a director of the Rencontre Internationale de la Photographie, visited the Museum Bartholdi in Colmar with his family. And there he discovered some images on the wall and especially a huge panoramic, which is like two meters and 50 centimeters and who, that represents the New York Harbor in a before 18, it's 1865. And in this image, uh, Bartholdi, the sculpture, had drawn his sculpture and he had invented the place where he wanted it to be, on the island of Bedlo. Okay, so liberty before she even existed. Exactly. So Sam Suzde, um asked me if I wanted to look with him uh, for images and to see if we had enough material to do an exhibition. And that was the beginning of the adventure. Okay. And as you say, the sculptor Bartholdi was French and this statue was a gift from France to the US. Yeah. Can you tell us something about the relationship between the two countries at that time? Well, um, there was this memory of, of a friendship, uh, of the, the help that France had given to America for independence, in particular with uh, Lafayette. And uh, the Republicans, uh, Edouard Laboulet, in 1865, uh, decided with friends uh, to uh, commemorate this friendship by making, building a monument. Okay, and can you explain why we have a little mini version of the Statue of Liberty here in Paris? Oh, there are many versions of the Statue of Liberty, many of them all over, in many, many places all over the world. And uh, the, but this one, one of this one in Paris, because there are many in Paris, uh, was offered by uh, America uh, as a gift to France, as in a, instance. A return <laughs> gift. Yes, exactly. Now, Auguste Bartholdi, the, the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty, had traveled to Egypt in the mid 19th century, yes. and he was very inspired by the, yeah. the ancient ruins he saw there. He initially wanted to create this female figure in Egypt, but that didn't happen. Can you explain why? Yeah, well, he was fascinated by Egypt, uh, Bartholdi, by two things, by the Colossus, the big uh, sculptures, like Colossus um, uh, of Nemno, and as well, he was fascinated by the uh, industrial architecture of the Canal des Chouez, which was gigantic as well. And he had this dream of making a colossal statue uh, he wanted to, I mean, to honor this canal, this uh, amazing, very cutting edge at this time uh, uh, construction. And so he decided to do a huge woman that would be uh, a light and to position it, to locate it, localize it at the entrance of the, of the canal of Suez. And he showed it uh, to um, Ferdinand de Lesseps, who was a developer of the canal, and to the Kedi d'Egypte, Ismail Pasha. But the Khedive didn't accept it, uh, neither do uh, Ferdinand de Lesseps. So he gave up this project, but he never forgot about it. So uh, Egypt's loss was the United States' gain in the end. Yeah. Now in this exhibition, we learn about the logistical side of getting the statue from France to the US and financing all of that construction and transport. Um, it was quite a struggle, I believe, to raise the necessary funds. Yeah, yeah, because um, it was not uh, funded by the state, neither in France, neither in, uh, in uh, America. So the whole story of the building of the Statue of Liberty is as, as well a story of finding money, how to find money and huge amount of money. So um, in France, they did a subscription and they created um, a committee, an uh, international committee, Franco-American, to help building the statue. And they managed uh, to, to gather money uh, through using many means, like doing banquet, 
big diner, um, tombola, <laughs> Bartholdi um, opened the 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 les ateliers where he was building the, the workshops. The, yeah, yeah. The, yes, and people could visit it, and uh, they had to pay to visit, of course. And in in the states, there was this big problem of uh, financing the piedestal because it, the financing was shared. The French were um, supposed to, to finance the, the statue. And the Americans, the base yes, of the, the statue. Base. And uh, when France sent uh, the statue to America in 1885, uh, it had to, to wait to be rebuilt because money was lacking. And there something amazing happened, uh, thanks to uh, Joseph Pulitzer, who was the owner of the journal The World. And this Democrat, well, he was not a Republican, but he, as uh, Bartholdi was, and, but he, he really was into the cause of liberty. And so uh, Pulitzer made what we can call the first crowdfunding uh, to, to gather money, and he managed it. Using the media and, exactly. yeah using his journal. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> First crowdfunding indeed. Now, Lady Liberty was inaugurated, as you mentioned, on Bedloe's Island, and that's now known yes. as Liberty yes. Island. In the, the bay entering New York, that's where immigrants would arrive yes. first uh, into the US. Can you tell me about the statue's association with these new populations? It is very associated to the idea of immigration and of a welcoming and to the value of America, those value of a, uh, a, a better world, a world where everything is possible, or where you can start from zero. But in, in the end, in fact, uh, this association to immigration is not um, obvious. And uh, uh, we have an example. Uh, in uh, 1890, the, the statue was built. But there was this idea of uh, doing what has become um, Ellis Island. Mm. And the first idea was to, to, to settle this refugee camp in the uh, island of Bedloe. And this was a scandal at the, at the time. And um, many uh, journals published caricatures, anti-immigration, against immigration. Like, for example, in the book, we, we published this one. And that's Liberty lifting her skirt there. Yeah, she's she's really a bit disgusted because uh, ships are, are um, uploading uh, uh, garbage of Europe, and people are, are just like gathering like here, and it's called against uh, non-control immigration. So some of the same issues we see today. Yeah, back and then, back then and then uh, the association with immigration came with this very lovely poem, a very nice poem from Emma Lazarus, who wrote it in 1883 to, to find money as well for funding, and it was forgotten. But then in 1903, it was uh, uh, rediscovered and uh, engraved in the, in the pedestal, and this very welcoming poem. Indeed, she's become, she's taken on this very, very iconic value in American culture and universally uh, around the globe. As a historian of imagery, why do you think that we have got so attached to this statue as opposed to other ones? Why has the Statue of Liberty become so iconic? There are many reasons, but the, the ones we, we've tried to show, we tried to show in the book and in the exhibition, is that um, before she even existed in New York, before she was even constructed, a thousand, thousand of images of her have circulated. So she was already very well known. And this is a conjunction of many things, like uh, she, the project appear when the media, illustrated media appear. It's all also very um, um, linked to the beginning of advertisement and advertisement with image, the use of image in advertisement. And um, it's also linked to the, to the very intuition that Bartholdi had of using image to, to promote and to find money in all way. Like it's a kind of, uh, a, he was a pioneer in marketing, by image marketing, we could say. 
Now, as well as a curator, you're also the director of the French Society of Photography, looking after the archive. And there are different schools of thought when it comes to the hierarchy of images, fine art or yeah. documentary, even amateur photography. Yeah. Looking ahead to the future, do you think that with the proliferation of amateur photography with social media, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that historians will be looking at, for example, Instagram or things like that in the future? Of course, and there they are still uh, already people uh, working and researchers working on images on Facebook, on uh, Instagrams. Of course, it's a very great ma material. And we have to be like uh, Bartholdi and uh, other uh, creators where we have to be very up to date with our technology. You know, Bartholdi, he was a photographer before being uh, the, the great sculpture we know. And he, when he was 18, he left to Egypt with the painter Jerome and they, they, they photographed with a camera box. At that time, it was so new, it was so innovative. He, photography uh, was invented in 1839, he went there in 1856. So um, it was, you know, really uh, uh, the um, last technology. And they are an example. We have to do, we have to look at the past to build the future. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. Luce Lebar, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Stay tuned to France 24. There's more news coming up after this.